First off, congratulations on the success of RV. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, given that, you know, I got kind of pummeled initially by the critics, but then I knew that when people would see it, they'd have a good time. And then it kind of survived and kind of be like the little RV that could. Yeah. It just kept rolling out there. It's like, oh, Poseidon RV, Poseidon RV. And it's like, still hanging in, which is, is kind of wonderful. Which is great. But you come to a movie like this, and it's certainly very different in tone. And mm -hmm. what attracted you to a project like this? The, the character itself, um, reading the material and knowing that it, you know, it was disturbing when I read it. I went, that's a good sign. Was it the fact that it was based on a true event? Yeah, I mean, I, and having talked to Armistead, of realizing how disturbing and, you know, frightening it was for him and having dealt with it. And then, and then he fictionalized it, but yet it still got the core essence of, you know, what happened. Yeah, that, that gives it even more. And then what's been happening recently with... I can't seem to think of the name of the book about the young boy, but it, everyone thought that this was this kid who wrote this autobiographical work about him as a truck stop hooker. Sure. I forget the name. And everyone bought it totally, and then it turns out it's a woman in San Francisco who's a musician and wrote it, and, you know, they got everyone to buy it totally. And uh, it's like that idea of, and then the, you feel this kind of betrayal. And the same thing, you know, like with Oprah with a million pieces, like he said, well, he made that stuff up. Well, as Stephen King said, you know, kind of the thing about it, People with substance abuse problems is denial. It's lying is kind of a given, you know, and you do delude yourself, and well, that's part of it, but yet, does it disturb you? Yeah, and okay, you're right to say, yeah, it's not autobiographical. These things you claim to do, you know, to, you know and, and it was that desire to be, either to be famous, to connect, to say, look at me, and the people were going, oh, this is amazing what you've done, and then it's not true. If you'd said that up front, would it have gotten as much press? No. Right. And when, with her, with her book, which could she have gotten it published? She said, I wrote this, and then it'd just be a work of fiction very well, in, well written work of fiction, but does it get the same emotional impact if she said it's written by this boy, he suffered this life, you go, oh my God, I want to meet this child and know him. Does it have the same impact? No. Why does she create a persona? Why does she do this? It's like Munchausen by ventriloquism. She knows it'll engage you. People are vulnerable to that. A lot of scams are based upon that. You know, a lot of scams are based upon playing off of, you know, people's desire to connect and people's desire to do the right thing, to do good, to help, to connect. And my character is even more vulnerable because his relationship has fallen through. He helped this man, his lover, helped him through, you know, AIDS, essentially. And now that the drugs have kicked in and he's basically healthy and doing well, he's like, oh, I want to live a life now. I've, I didn't have one before. Well, great. Well, I just helped you through the hard times, you know. I got you through the worst and now you want better. Great. See ya. Which particularly made your character vulnerable to some of the things that played out within the rest of the story. Very much. You know, he's, he's raw. And you know, all of a sudden something comes along and gives you a sense of purpose when you're feeling lost. You know, and it gives him also you know, a paternal sense, too, like reaching out to a kid. And even his, his boyfriend said, you know, you always wanted a kid, this is it. Here's your tiny Tim. And that plays off the Dickensian metaphor. Like, here's your little damaged child. You know, here's your, here's your dream. You can, you know, heal him and do all this stuff. And then when it turns out to be, you know, probably not true, it's very hard to convince yourself, oh, it, you know, and very hard to give up the notion that it isn't. Even at the end when he sees the videotape, you're going, is he real? Yeah. Is it real? Then why? And why? And that, you know, playing off of that with people would, you know, would creep the shit out of you. It's like it would keep you going for a long time. Thank you so much. <laughs>